as he is. You were here with Diane Flick Williams, the head volleyball coach at Western Washington University, entering her 17th season. Probably seems like yesterday. Uh, we want to give you a little preview of the season that's coming up. Open the season officially on September 1st, uh, playing in the Concordia St. Paul tournament in Minneapolis. Be a pretty good test for the Vikings right off the bat. But I uh, want to talk to Diane about uh, the team, the 2016 Vikings coming off a Final Four season. And uh, Diane, uh, like I said, you returned a team that went to the Final Four last year. Uh, a lot of expectations. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking for the Vikings this year and uh, as they take the court? You know, I'm hoping to see a lot of what we did last year. Not necessarily um, counting on the successes, but really counting on the effort and attitude we bring to every single match. Um, you know, a lot of things have to fall in place to reach a Final Four. Those are the things we can't control. So I'm looking for us to really bring in the effort, the preparation, so that whatever comes our way, we're able to handle it. It's going to be an exciting time because we're no longer young uh, in the sense of experience, but we're still young because we're still a lot of freshmen and sophomores and juniors. So I'm really excited to see what they decide to bring back from the summer and where we're going to go from here. Last year, you guys opened the season at a tournament in Tampa, and the Final Four ended up being in Tampa. Mm -hmm. This year, you guys are opening the season uh, at Concordia St. Paul, who've won seven Division II national championships. They're a perennial power. Uh, is this something that you really look to, to test the team early and kind of gauge where they are and let them know that it's a you know this is from the go we're gonna play we're gonna play some volleyball. Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in playing as tough a competition as possible. We have to test and see where we're at. And when the only way we can do that is to play really good teams. So Concordia's first national championship was against us. They never forget their first, so I'm really excited to go back there and, and play against them. Um, but they're going to provide us some really great challenges, and we have to have those to know what we need to improve on when we go into regional play the next weekend in Sonoma. Uh, four consecutive NCAA tournament appearances for the Vikings. Mm -hmm. That's the most in program history. How do you maintain that? How do you get the team to continue to look at the next challenge? Because uh, it's not easy to get to that regional, uh, especially in the West region. H how, do you, how do you get them to kind of keep their eye on the prize and kind of push past that? Well, I think we redefine what the prize is because um, regionals is really far away. There are so many matches that happen before you get there, and they're not. it doesn't come because you just want it to be there. So we really focus on being good in the moment. We try to work on the next 10 seconds. If that 10 seconds didn't work for us, let's redefine it and go for it in the next 10 seconds. And then when we pick our head up, then we're at the regional tournament. I, I think if we look any farther beyond that, things become bigger than they need to be, and we end up playing, uh, trying to do more than we are supposed to do. So if we stay in the moment, then we can get to the regional tournament. To be honest with you, I had no idea it was four in a row until someone mentioned it this year. So it's obviously not a focus of mine. I obviously want to get there, but that's not what we look at on a daily basis. Speaking about some individual players, uh, you had a lot of great seasons last year. Rachel Roeder and Jenica McPherson graduated mm -hmm. from the program after being here for five years, four-year letter winners. You know, Abby Phelps and Kaylee Harper had two great seasons amongst for others. Sure. Uh, then you kind of have a target on them as you know, having great freshman season. How do you get them to keep going for that next challenge and how to overcome the fact that they are going to be a little bit marked when they step on that court? Well, they entered last year with no expectations. And so um, what they were able to do is have the freedom to play and create whatever it was that they were going to be. And that's what we keep them focused on. Just create the next best you and don't worry about what other people put on top of you. You know, expectations are going to hit us left and right. They're going to come from other teams. They're going to come from parents. They're going to come from coaches. I mean, it's going to hit us from every direction. And we have to keep our eye on, get better today, and see what where it takes us tomorrow. And if they can stay with that, they and they also realize, too, that if they make people around them better, that's actually going to help our team even more and improve them. So if the focus doesn't need to be strictly on them, but on our team as a whole, because that will elevate everybody's play. It's early to you know, put this into words, but as, as this team takes the court in the next month, uh, what are your expectations for them? What do you see them uh, doing as a group? Uh, you know, speaking to alumni, to former players, the parents, the future Vikings, well, what's the 2016 version of this, this program going to look like? You know, the one thing I think is our hue and cry, and I love doing every single day when we go to the gym, is watching how hard they work. There is not a day that they take off when it comes to the effort. Sometimes their effort gets diverted in the wrong direction. That's my job is to bring them back so that we're going to, you know, forward together. But you're going to see a hardworking team. You're going to see a team that never says die, and they're in the moment playing for that next 10 seconds. You win that next 10 seconds, you win the match. And so they're an exciting brand of ball to watch play. 
They will play fast. They'll play aggressive. They will fly for balls. They will be a dedicated group to be better than they were 10 seconds ago. And the season is quickly approaching, like we said. Uh, going to be reporting um, in the middle of August, likely. Uh, we'll give a quick update on the team, what they've been up to this summer, how off-season training went last year, uh, last spring, and, and, uh, and just kind of what the schedule will be leading up to that September 1st opener. Well, we, like I said, we never fault their effort. So when we hit um, the weight room and the jump training in the winter, they went after it full force. So we got ourselves in really great physical shape. And then in the spring, we hit some... Um, tough opponents and really tested ourselves. We also created some obstacles for ourselves too as we've had some injuries along the way and have had to recreate what a lineup looks like and who plays what position but they've been open to doing that and so it's been really great to see them in the summer come back at camp time see where they're at. Um, a lot of them have been doing satellite camps or working other camps so they're while they're learning while they're teaching the game. Um, so I think they've done a really good job of preparing for this season. We've always said that you know, winter and spring time is the time for the coaches to kind of set the path, but it's for them to take over when it comes to summer and fall. So I'm anxious to see where they're going to take us. Uh, appreciate your time, Coach Flick Williams. I look forward to seeing the Vikings on the court again September 1st at Concordia St. Paul for their tournament. Uh, good luck this season. Thanks. Go Vikes!